looks like we got a nice crowd. So uh, hopefully that means that uh, you're interested in the content and you, you found some time to, to dial in. And hopefully that doesn't mean that it's raining and uh, you can't get any work done. <laughs> so that said, uh, let's dig in and get started. Alrighty. So what I wanted to cover today, um, you know, I, I like doing these, um, you know, these little forums to talk about new products, uh, you know, every quarter or so. And uh, over the past couple months, we've we've launched a couple new products that we're very excited about and wanted to make sure that uh, all you guys knew about them as well. The um, I'll back FM100 uh, charge controller is what we're going to lead off with today. And some of those accessories as well. The Discover Battery uh, AES battery packs that we're very happy to offer. Um, some new product out from Morningstar. The um, I'm I'm dubbing it the TSM. There's a TS MPPT M model and a TS um, PWM M model that we wanted to talk about. And then Magnum's got some uh, some developments in the RTR department uh, that will allow you to a um, uh, couple larger systems on one on one RTR. So happy to talk about that. And um, as Caitlin mentioned, we'll have some time at the end for questions and answers and. As always, I'll do my best to answer your questions, and if you stump me, then, uh, you know, we'll take your name and your email, and we'll get back to you. All righty. So, first off, wanted to cover the um, new FM100 um, 300-volt uh, charge controller, and I wanted to start with this slide, which shows uh, the FlexMax range, so the, the three different offers now in the Outback charge controller portfolio. Uh, the FM60, which is a 60 amp, 150 volt charge controller, you know, we, they really position that as, as the value product. Um, the FM80, 150, uh, similar chassis and frame uh, to the FM60. You notice there that um, from from the fan down, you know, almost identical. Um, solid performer, going to give you a little bit more performance. Um, higher current ratings on that charge controller. Uh, similar look, feel, uh, aesthetics. And, uh, and programming. And then the new, um, you know, relatively new within the last couple of months, FM100 charge controller. So they've really positioned this as their premium product. Um, it's got the um, highest overall performance of anything in, in their portfolio. And I think it rivals uh, or surpasses anything, um, uh, any other charge controllers, high voltage, high current charge controllers on the market. Uh, and uh, should lead to reduced system cost and in installation. So um, you, you may recognize the chassis of this. It may look familiar to some of you guys. Um, very similar to the, um, to the FM Extreme uh, charge controller. They use the same, um, I guess, casing or, or, or molded exterior on, the, on that product. Um, so it may look familiar, but the, uh, the internals are all new. So what are we, what are we looking at? Um, really what we're looking at is, is um, a higher power rating charge controller that uh, in, in larger arrays will reduce system costs by reducing component count. So, you know, um, fewer charge controllers as each of them can handle more power, reducing complexity and installation time. Uh, as with all their products, it's been engineered for reliability. So extensive testing on quality and reliability, including um, something that uh, in the industry we call halt testing, highly accelerated life cycle testing. This is this is pretty interesting. Um, if you've ever seen one of these test chambers, it's um, it's a pretty unique machine. Uh, it's a machine that essentially, uh, you know, at the basis of it, what they're trying to do is um, um, this is going to sound tremendously obvious, but they want to accelerate the life cycle of a product um, and estimate its performance at the end of its life cycle. So to do that, rather than um, you know, rather than powering it up and and and, and, and waiting for 10 years to see what the life cycle is going to look like, they accelerate it by putting it in a chamber that's going to um, power the unit up, submit it to um, kind of uh, you know, almost a time lapse, um, a time lapse of a, of a daily cycle where they're heating it up, cooling it off, heating it up, cooling it off, um, under power, and, and really simulating what's the performance going to look like at the end of life after running through, you know, uh, Three to 5,000 cycles of, of, of daily use. Um, so as with all their products, they run it through that, um, make any incremental changes they need to make along the way to make sure that the performance and the reliability and the durability is, is what you've come to expect from that. So to get there, um, it's an outdoor rated uh, NEMA 3R enclosure. So um, um, 
the, the IP equivalent is IP54, comes with the standard five-year warranty. Um, this is really important, bullet point number three here, um, meets NEC 2014-2017 rapid shutdown compliancy. So um, functionality included with the charge controller, um, to be able to be fully compliant, you're gonna need a solution like the ICS Plus, which will give you arc fault and, um, and rapid shutdown. Uh, and we've got um, we've got materials and uh, there's some some really good uh, webinars and things from from Outback on ourselves on this topic, um, and of course internal ground fault protection. So, um, you know, fully fully code compliant system regardless if you're in 2014 or 2017, and of course uh, MPPT algorithm which is going to increase energy harvest. So, um, the, the benefits to MPPT in a, in a grid coupled system you're you're going to more quickly achieve cell state. Uh, you're going to harvest more power earlier and later in the day. And then in off-grid systems, um, you know, more power so you can be able to recharge your battery bank uh, more quickly and more efficiently um, throughout the day. So key specs on this unit, um, we're going to just kind of walk through top to bottom. Um, supports all of those kind of standard um, DC voltages, 24, 36, 48. Um, Max continuous input and output current, 64 or 100 amps. Um, max, um, max VOC, 300 volts. And, and you see here the, the, the average peak power conversion number is very efficient. Um, so a, a very efficient unit across a, a wide MPPT window and high current and high voltage. Um, all of that means that um, your array is gonna produce power longer during the day. It's going to harvest more due to the high efficiency. Um, and you'll be able to get more of that power um, into your battery bank or to your inverter. Some of the other things here, uh, we spoke about the environmental protection, NEMA 3R, um, internal fusing, good thermal performance, as you see there. Um, you know, despite it being a, a, um, a NEMA 3R unit that you can put outside, um, operable all the way up to 140 um, internal temperature, so, so good there. And of course, the, you know, the remote interface, RJ4E5 to Optix 3 via the, the Mate 3S. So what does this mean? Um, what does this mean for systems? And, um, you know, why is this so much more cost effective? Uh, we'll get to the stringing in a second, but, you know, basically the 300 volt VOC is going to enable you to do two longer two string arrays to reduce BOS and installation costs. So uh, unlike some of the other charge controllers on the market where um, the you know 150 or 250 volt VOC uh, is going to make you um, make you string more comma shorter um, strings. So unlike having a um, a charge controller where you're forced to do like a three strings of four, or three strings by five, you can now do two longer strings. Which you know, as we may remember, when you've only got two strings per NEC, um, they don't have to be independently fused. So Great savings there on VOS and installation cost. Um, the 100 amp output current allows for higher power modules and arrays. Um, and the point here from Outback being, um, some of the other charge controllers on the market have, have high amperage. Um, some of them have high, high VOC. Um, only Outback has, has combined to do both. So really important part there. Um, um, updated in their string sizing tools and um, They've got some other materials that you know we just we don't have time to dive into completely today, but some some other really great tools and um, webinars out there that um, explain the the stringing benefits in a lot more detail. So the supporting components, um, you know, what else is not, is out there from Outback to to support this? Um, their flex power systems now have the um, the brackets and the back plates to um, to be able to take advantage of this FM100. We're also hearing that very soon we'll have um, we'll have FPR and FP systems with integrated um, FlexMax 100 charge controllers as an option. So ex excited for that! Um, and of course, um, they've got new circuit breakers rated for 300 volts. So a 40 amp, 60 amp, 80 amp, 100 amp, and 125 amp um, breaker now available to um, to support, of course, overcurrent protection on the charge controller. So very excited about that. Um, I know Outback is as well. We've had them in stock for a few months now, and, and um, they're selling really well. So appreciate any of you guys that have, that have bought those already. Uh, if you haven't, give us a call. 
I'm more than happy to, to you know, quote and design a system for you around that product. And uh, again, take advantage of the, um, the the longer strings and the higher current you're going to be able to get through, uh, you know, kind of standard charge controller. All righty. So the um, the next product here that we're excited to talk about is the um, Discover AES. So um, <laughs> I was um, in the next slide. You'll see. Uh, I just couldn't let the AES go, and I had to I had to speak to that. So. Um, Discover Battery, uh, been around a long time in the um, lead acid and, and some of the other chemistry markets. Uh, they've got a long track record in supplying battery systems to um, off-grid and renewable energy space, as well as um, kind of mobile and stationary storage for boy, all types of things, including um, boats, RVs, forklifts, et cetera. Um, so the AES system, um, Battery pack that allows for uh, design and functionality improvements through enhanced cycling, charge time, and weight reduction in stationary and mobile applications. So, what does that all mean? Uh, we'll get to that, but basically, um, dramatic improvements in cycle life and charge efficiency, along with um, you know, near or effectively zero maintenance requirements, means um, lower total uh, levelized cost of energy, um, smaller footprint. And um, I think from what we've seen, a, a dramatically, uh, maybe not dramatically, but a much improved installation experience and a, um, a much cleaner installation. So let's get into the details. What is a Discover AES? Um, so it's, a, it's an integrated lithium ion, lithium ion phosphate is the chemistry pack, designed to really be a drop-in replacement for lead acid. So um, the, the chemistry and format, if you're interested in those things like I am, um, 26 parallel strings of 16 cells. Um, these come in, uh, that's for the 48 volt version. Um, these come in a couple different um, uh, voltage levels, a, a 24 and 48, and a couple different um, um, overall rating, um, kilowatt hour ratings. We've, we've mostly focused on the, um, the 42, 48, 66, 50, which is a, um, a group 42 battery, uh, 48 volts, and 6.65 uh, kilowatt hours is the, is the math there. Uh, one of the real big uh, benefits to this system is uh, they, come in, they come equipped with either CAN bus or ZAN bus enabled BMS. So the ZAN bus, uh, if you're familiar with that term, is the proprietary language that Schneider Electric inverters, charge controllers, system control panels, et cetera, all speak. That's a, um, that's a proprietary derivative of CAN bus. Um, the CAN bus enabled units um, will have functionality down the road for um, uh, latent communication with um, other products like um, Magnum, Outback, et cetera. Um, but right now, this is the only um, kind of plug and play lithium ion pack with Schneider Electric that will allow you to view um, battery status and will allow the inverter to make decisions based on information coming directly from the battery. So. Um, big improvement there, um, kind of a, um, um, a step change improvement in, in communications between batteries and inverters. And the, the reason I harp on this, if you've listened to it, any of our other webinars or trainings on, on lithium ion, is um, you really need that communication to protect the system and to protect the battery. Um, one of the things we'll show in, in the following slide is um, the, the voltage on a lithium ion pack is going to remain much more stable and much flatter um, than a similar lead acid uh, battery bank would. And um, if you've dug into these inverters at all, you know that they make decisions on charging, on discharging, on islanding based on um, battery bus voltage. So, you know, inherently lithium ion is going to be a much stabler voltage. And if you're depending on that battery voltage, for the inverter to make decisions on what to do. Um, sometimes the inverter could make the wrong decision um, because that battery um, voltage stays flat. So you really need a BMS that's gonna communicate with the inverter and um, make decisions based on state of charge, um, and you know, um, power throughput and, and not just voltage. And we'll, we'll speak to that in a few more minutes. Um, so high cycle life, um, the batteries come with a four year unlimited cycle warranty. Um, so, um, you know, that 
that's going to allow you to design systems, um, I suppose, a little bit more aggressively, maybe, is the word. Um, so because you can cycle these um, more frequently, because you can discharge them a little bit more aggressively, um, you can end up with, um, you know, what I would call a, a right-sized installation, where uh, you see here in this installation that the I believe a, an XW plus 6848 with an MPPT 80 and um, two of the 4248 6650 packs. So much, much smaller footprint, much tighter installation. Um, you see them there, they can be wall mounted. Um, <laughs> obviously uh, you wanna make sure your wall can support that kind of weight, but um, you know, can, can really free up some, um, some footprint in an installation where, um, you know, where, where space may be at a premium. And of course, you know, we're talking about lithium ions, so we, we have to mention high charge and discharge ratings. So um, a single one of these packs has a 130 amp continuous uh, current rating and a surge of 600 amp for up to three seconds. So um, really great electrical performance. You know, we've talked about the monitoring and the metering, um, high cycle life. And we'll duck, we'll duck next into um, some of the particulars of why why you may want to consider this versus your next lead acid product uh, project. So, ease of use is a big with is is a big aspect of um, of these lithium ion packs. Um, maintenance free operation. So, um, if if you've been around and you've you've worked with flooded lead acid, you know that there's you know some you know possibly considerable maintenance requirements there around checking specific gravity. Um, keeping them hydrated, et cetera. Um, and while AGM um, lead acid chemistries have um, much improved, um, you know, maintenance and you know, obviously they're sealed, um, um, they're, they're not entirely maintenance free. Um, so big improvement there with the Discover uh, AES product. And I mentioned their ease of use, the, the plug and play integration with Zambus. And we have heard that um, Outback and Discover are, are, are partnering in um, putting some integration together so that um, hopefully in short order, you'll be able to see those same, those same benefits and um, ease, of, ease of use installation with Outback products as well. Um, on the performance side, uh, peak capacity without degradation or shortened lifespan. And um, really what this speaks to is that, uh, you know, with a typical lead S battery, the harder you work it, the shorter your lifespan is going to be. That's why, as an industry, we've 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 somewhat standardized around a 50% depth of discharge for um, for renewable applications or off grid. Um, with certain um, with certain batteries designed primarily for for backup, you can you can discharge down to 80% um, depth of discharge, but your cycle life is dramatically decreased. And this is you know this is just a function of lead acid chemistry where um, the harder you work a battery, the more uh, heat and stress you're um, you're putting on that battery, and, and the fewer cycles you're going to get out of it. So, um, the, the, in my opinion, one of the huge clear-cut advantages to lithium ion is, you know, the improved um, depth of discharge without sacrificing the the cycle count. The other thing about um, lead acid batteries you've got to consider is um, the harder you charge or discharge a battery, the less um, the less effective amp hours you're going to get out of the battery, even without taking into account cycle life. So there's some um, there's some really good stuff out there from um, you know Battery University from from Victron that uh, portrays in a lot more uh, effective and, and lucid manner than I could articulate how um, what the trade-offs are there with um, with with C rates and with cycle life. Uh, and I've got some material here from the Discover. Um, materials um, um, on the left speaking to um, consistent um, you know consistent runtime and throughput at, at lower or higher uh, discharge rates so um, you know they they speak to things in, in C rates um, you know from the from the traditional lead acid background we'd be talking about a, a 20 hour rate or a two hour rate or a one hour rate and basically what they're showing here is that with the lithium ion chemistry, um, you'll get the same effective capacity uh, or, or runtime, if you will, if you're discharging at a 0.05 C, so a 20 hour rate, or if you're discharging at one C. Um, we know from flooded and from, um, from AGM chemistry is that um, the higher the discharge current, the less effective capacity or the less runtime you're gonna get out of it. 
and it's probably hard to see here, but hopefully when I send out the, uh, the slides, it'll be a little more apparent, um, um, some of the graphics there. The other, um, the other thing to take into account um, with this chemistry is, excuse me, dramatically improved performance at partial state of charge. So again, going back to the, to the lead acid paradigm, um, I'd say most lead acid chemistries really don't like being at a partial state of charge and being left there. Um, you know, someone explained to me once that a battery, a battery is great being charged or discharged, but they they really don't like you know, if you if you consider that a battery has a personality, they really don't like being left at a partial state of charge with no load or no charge being applied to them. Um, lithium ion chemistries, frankly, you know don't don't have that hang up. Um, so you know this, this can be a much more effective battery for things like self consumption where um, you charge up the battery during the day, you're gonna discharge it, um, you know, you're gonna discharge it down during the, the, the TOU or the peak window, and then you'll probably leave it there till the next day. Um, you know, simply, simply speaking, they don't have that hang up around partial state of charge, and um, you, know, you won't be chewing into the, um, into the usable capacity by doing so. So lots of great material that we can send you on the Discover AES. Uh, if you've got questions, you're interested in pricing, you want to see us, you know, design a system or put a quote together for you, please reach out via your normal channels, either your uh, your sales rep, um, if, uh, reach out to the tech department as well, uh, reach out to me and we can uh, we can get something put together for you. So that was Discover AES. Um, we'll move forward and talk about the uh, Morningstar TSM product. So. Um, what is it? It's uh, it's a it's a feature benefit improvement to the um, the traditional TriStar lineup from Morningstar, with the added convenience of the TSM meter um, already included. So um, you see here on the right, I've got a table of the uh, kind of a product selection table from Morningstar with uh, a variety of their different uh, MPPT charge control their their TriStar MPPT, MPPT charge controllers at, at the various power ratings. And at the high end on the 60, um, you know, which is our best seller as, as well as theirs, um, they're not an improvement where they've included that meter there for you. So, um, you know, the, the, the takeaway here is um, it's done the work for you. It's included in the kit. Uh, it's just one less thing you've got to order and track and, and make sure it gets out to the job site. Um, the features benefits of the, of the TriStar line, you still get that fast sweep. And PPT algorithm, um, you get the robust thermal performance and no fan. You see there that that high quality machined uh, heat sink, and peak efficiency of 99%, which is um, pretty exceptional for a, um, for a, a, a high performance and um, you know, in my opinion, pretty affordable charge controller. And we're cruising right along here. So um, the Magnum ARTR is a uh, incremental improvement to the RTR line. So this was specifically designed to provide uh, system level connectivity and programming for large Magnum installations. So um, one of these ARTRs can accommodate up to either, uh, I had to put an either there, either four MXPAE inverter chargers in parallel or up to seven PT100 charge controllers. Um, it's it's my reading here, and, and someone like Brad on our team may correct me down the road, but it's my reading here that um, that one of these can control kind of an either or scenario, up to four inverter chargers or up to seven PT100s or some combination of less than that. But um, I guess the takeaway here is you you could not have one of these and use four inverter chargers and seven charge controllers on the uh, on the same RTR. Um, facilitate firmware via micro SD card. Um, so that's a that's a that's a great benefit. If um, you know if you've got kind of standard systems that you've designed, you can um, or not standard systems. Excuse me. If you've got firmware, you've got to do on the uh, on the entire installation, or you know a bank of inverter chargers or a bank of charge controllers. You can upload via micro SD and push that firmware out um, onto each of those kind of all at once. So. Um, again, for, for larger systems, some, some, some good improvements there on functionality and, and ease of programming. So what I threw in here is a comparison that, that I needed, certainly, 
to uh, to keep track of all of the different uh, RTR and remote uh, offerings from Magnum. So we go here from from left to right, basically in 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 kind of rank order of of capability and um, and complexity. So you see there with the RTR, you're getting you're getting all of the features of uh, system wide visibility and programming. Um, you still get the control and display that you would on any of these models. Um, and then down at the bottom, you see the uh, the kind of incremental improvements. So field upgradable with Anchor SD is, is something you don't get on any of the other models. Um, and then the large system stacking. So in the past, if you wanted to stack or parallel um, um, these units, you could do so with an RTR, but you'd be limited on how many, um, how many nodes you could have on that network. So they've removed, um, so they've they've removed that limitation, and um, and now you've got you know larger capabilities on on one single RTR unit. And I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to move forward, and um, I've got here some of the part numbers we discussed today. Um, I won't read through all of these, but um, I didn't include the the breakers and flexware uh, part numbers for Outback, but of course we've we've got all of that stuff available. I've got here the RTR, the um, TriStar MPPT60 um, with meter, the TriStar PWM60 um, with meter, and then a couple different flavors of the Discover battery. So you see here, um, we've the 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 first two are the ZAN bus and CAN bus options on the on the smaller system sizes, uh, 2.8 kilowatt hours. And then the bottom two are the um, ZAN bus and CAN bus options on the larger system, the 6.65 kilowatt hours. So you see there are part numbers, manufacturer, manufacturer part number, and that'll be available in the slides as well. I did want to spend a little bit of time um, kind of providing some, maybe a sneak preview of what we might see in Q2 and Q3. Uh, I didn't want to include too many details um, as, uh, you know, before a launch, things can change on power ratings, on sometimes product names, et cetera. But these are some things that we've got our eye on for Q2 and Q3 that um, you know, we're, we, we look forward to with anticipation. So we've got a new energy cell product coming out from Outback Power. Um, you know, they, these guys are great at, at kind of always making um, adjustments and tweaks to their, to their battery lineup to provide the best in class in terms of, um, in terms of ratings, in terms of reliability and quality. Uh, in terms of new chemistries, and I can't say too much about this one. Uh, I don't want to steal any of their thunder, but um, they'll be promoting it here pretty shortly, and, and we're pretty excited about it. So, um, if that's a lot of buildup with no um, with no punchline, I apologize, but uh, want to make sure that that was on your radar and you kept an ear open for that. Um, flooded lead acid systems from Outback um, that include uh, some of the accessories you'd need in a flooded system, like um, you know watering, hydration um kitting of the uh cells and the rack as well um and then of course the big one here uh skybox so um had a great meeting with the outback team a few weeks ago uh they've got a launch date prepared um i don't want to paint them to a corner and, and share that with you but suffice it to say that in the q2 q3 time frame we're very excited about this product hitting our shelves and uh, we'll have a lot to say about it when it uh when it does arrive um, as, as well on that bucket, in terms of uh, product that we've been eagerly awaiting and, and working with the manufacturer on is an uh, inverter charger from Morningstar um, that um, if, the, if the preliminary data sheets or any indication will, will be a good value and uh, a very high performing product and uh, very excited about that. Um, last thing, and I included this in the, in the what's new in off-grid space, um, we've got some new um, uh, they're called various different things by different people, but um, some people call them off-grid modules. Some people call them 12 volt modules. Um, these are the small, small frame um, uh, polycrystalline modules from Daysol. Um, you know, you've seen us in the past have a, a 30, uh, a 60, a 90, a 135 watt module. Um, Daysol has been able to squeak a little bit more performance out and get higher wattage in those same footprints. And uh, we're in the process of bringing in those new part numbers. So um, if you're an off-grid, off-grid guy and you're doing some, you know, some DC-only systems, um, could be a great fit there. 
And, uh, you know, we're excited to be able to squeeze a little bit more wattage out of the same footprint. So if you've designed systems or, or, or racking around a certain size and um, certain dimensions, um, no changes needed there. And uh, the incremental improvement in performance is just, um, you know, just, just more watt hours and amp hours you can be able to put into that system. So we, uh, <laughs> we got through that a little bit quicker than I anticipated. It's only 9.30. Um, but we do have some time for, for questions and answers. Um, so, Caitlin, I'll go ahead and, and throw it over to you. Thank you, John. Um, so it looks like we do have a number of questions. Um, so we'll go okay. ahead and go through those as many as we, as many as we can. Um, also, for everyone else on the webinar, uh, if you do have some additional questions, you're more than welcome to submit those to the question pane located on the control panel, and we'll try to answer as many as possible that come in. Uh, also, you can exit the webinar at any time during or following the question and answer session. Uh, the survey will pop up in a new window once the webinar ends. Give us your feedback on the survey and I will send you the presentation. So I will go ahead and start off the first question from Alan. Does Outback publish max array size numbers for the FM100 for 24 and 48 volt systems? Um, I, I certainly believe so. Um, I don't have a copy of the um, installation manual in front of me, but um, but I believe so. Um, 